Well, folks, we have another episode of I Never Thought That Leopards Would Eat My Face, says person who voted for the Leopards Eating People's Faces Party. And this time it is Rick Grinnell. He is the former U.S. ambassador to Germany under the Trump administration, and he also served as acting director of national intelligence. But nowadays he's just kind of hanging out. He's uh, tweeting about how Trump is good and how Democrats are bad. And uh, that's the extent of what it seems like he's doing nowadays. But he took a break from that to condemn a recent move made by his own party. So Texas Governor Greg Abbott announced that the 2028 GOP convention will be held in Houston. And in response, Grinnell objected to that, writing the Texas Republican Party bans Log Cabin, the gay conservative group with 80 chapters across the U.S. Texas is the only state that bans us from their state convention. The national GOP convention should be in Texas if this ban remains. Now, to be completely fair, I understand why he, as a gay Republican, would feel disillusioned with this move. But just a reminder, this is the Republican Party. They've made it abundantly clear that they fucking hate gay people. And yes, that includes gay Republicans too, Rick Grinnell. But I guess that Grinnell thought that he could get his conservative followers to pressure the GOP to change the location or do something, galvanize some sort of a movement. But predictably, they weren't very receptive to his cause, and uh, he was nearly ratioed, and people responded by roasting him in the replies. One of the highest like replies reads, Homosexuality is wrong and promotes degenerate sexual practices. It has no place in a healthy society. Now, Rick Grinnell responded to that saying, Donald Trump disagrees with you. Oh, okay, I'm sure they're going to change their opinion immediately. Now, other people chimed in saying, good on Texas. Cry more. Cry about it, clown emoji. Every state should do this. Amen. Good. Gay and conservative is a logical fallacy. I don't have a problem with this. Good job, Texas. Gay, conservative, pick one. Cry laughing emojis. Texas GOP not afraid to lead the party, representing their people and not everyone else. Good work. Now, to be fair, it wasn't just right-wingers shitting on him because a couple of people pointed out the obvious. Can't understand how a party devoted exclusively to omnidirectional bigotry as a governing ethos could do such a thing. This person writes, Sad you get to realize your base hates you and only uses you when it's convenient to mask their hatred to the general. A true leopards are eating my face moment. This person says, Oh man, who could have seen this coming? <laughs> Now, to be entirely fair, some people did defend him. For example, this person seemed to agree that this was wrong and wanted Trump to move the convention to a better location. And this person even called it repulsive and said that they'd contact the GOP, although they were ratioed and also called a cringeworthy dick lover. So there's that. And look, it's easy to feel sorry for a gay man who's getting dogpiled for trying to defend his community. But I need you to understand that Richard Grinnell does not deserve your sympathy. And there's many reasons why this is the case. First of all, uh, what exactly did he expect? I mean, if he were to stick his hand in a toaster while it's on, would he be surprised if he got burned? I would imagine not, right? Because he knows that's what toasters do, right? So apply that same logic to Republicans. Don't be surprised when Republicans Republican and do homophobic things. I mean, they're going to hate gay people because that's just what they do. And even though it's oxymoronic, gay men can be fascists too. And Richard Grinnell is indeed a Trumpian fascist, and he's trying to advance gay rights within the Republican Party by throwing trans people under the bus. For example, some of the people in his replies speculated that the log cabin Republicans were being banned because they supported trans rights, but Rick Grinnell actually responded to that, confirming that gay Republicans also hate trans people, just like cis Republicans, writing, log cabin leads the way for protecting kids and calling for no hormone blockers or gender surgeries for anyone under the age of 18 and no biological boys and girls sports. You just hate gay people and it's weird. Yeah, so there's also that. Now, I'm assuming that the irony is completely lost on him, but he probably actually is deluded enough to believe that being explicitly transphobic is going to further ingratiate him with Republicans and their base, but in actuality, that's not going to happen and he's just being bigoted to trans people. Now, as a gay man, that's especially weird to me because the source of transphobia and homophobia is one and the same, right? If you're born with a penis, you are supposed to act masculine and be attracted to women and wear men's clothes and identify as a man. But gay people and trans people both violate those rigid gender norms, which the Republican Party's evangelical base tries to enforce. 
So it's illogical to think that they'd be okay with one, but not the other. It's all degeneracy, according to them. And you're not going to advance your own cause by throwing some members of your community under the bus, Rick. But he doesn't care or doesn't understand that. Now, this speaks to a broader problem with LGBTQ plus conservatives. They try to ascribe a certain level of rationality to transphobic and homophobic Republicans. And they think that if they do that, then they could win. They could win these people over with facts and a good enough argument. But I mean, I feel like there's so many examples to demonstrate that that doesn't work, that um, they should know this by now. And furthermore, having a good enough argument isn't going to win someone over who believes that their God thinks that what you are doing, your identity, your existence is bad. But that doesn't stop LGBTQ plus conservatives like Caitlyn Jenner, for example, from trying again and learning the hard way every single time. So Caitlyn Jenner, for example, was ratioed after she angrily tweeted this to Ron DeSantis. Hey, Governor Ron DeSantis, watching your interview on Brett Baer, you're still defending your bizarre anti-gay ad. Which bathroom should I use? Now, let's just pause right there. First of all, let me just say it's very brave of her. We'll phrase it that way to ask a Republican fascist this particular question. But I mean, she thought that this was actually an easy answer to them because she followed up with this tweet where she was also ratioed again, by the way, where she confirms that she had bottom surgery. Now, I feel like she thought that this would be a compelling argument because typically they try to base bathroom use and norms on genitals. So it makes sense, logically speaking. But these folks don't use logic. It's just pure unadulterated hate, right? So, of course, they didn't care, and they proceeded to roast the absolute shit out of her, writing in various ways that she should use the men's bathroom. And again, I don't know what she expected. It's like LGBTQ plus conservatives are suckers, or maybe they're masochists, and they enjoy the humiliation. But what I always find really fascinating is how whenever a queer conservative falsely claims that the Republican Party is actually tolerant, Republicans then loudly respond saying, no, the fuck we're not. And I'm not sure if it's a grift or if it's cognitive dissonance or outright delusion, but whatever the case may be, it is demonstrably untrue. The party hates queer people, but that doesn't stop folks like Caitlyn Jenner and Richard Grinnell from insisting that the GOP loves them. For example, here's some eyebrow raising comments Richard Grinnell has made in the past. Do you feel like you're going out on a limb at all here? I mean, are you worried at all about pushback from elements of the president's base, from evangelicals, from social conservatives? No, not at all. I think I'm wildly supported by the, uh, the, the both parties. I don't think this is a partisan issue. And I think it's really important that we move beyond that. Um, I've seen uh, progress from, from the start of, of LGBTI equality. And uh, it's really important to not be partisan about this. Hmm, I wonder if he knows what the T in LGBTI stands for. Hmm, curious. Now, that was his response to a question about the Trump administration's global push to decriminalize homosexuality. And just a bit of a reminder here, Trump was asked about that, and he was literally... <laughs> He was literally unaware that his own administration was even making this push, but that effort was led by none other than Richard Grinnell, and he did that and then gave Trump credit for it and then claimed that the GOP is becoming more tolerant, and that's the evidence. Not very compelling. And to be clear, that is a noble effort. I'm glad that he used his position of power for good. But it is not indicative of the Republican Party's collective feelings about queer people. Remember, earlier this year, Ted Cruz did the absolute bare minimum by condemning a Ugandan law that made homosexuality punishable by death. And by the way, they're set to execute a 20-year-old man charged with aggravated homosexuality. But Ted Cruz was roasted when he made this basic condemnation of Uganda's kill the gays law. So if the party simply loathed homosexuals, that would be one thing. But it's not that simple. They literally want gay people to die. But Rick Grinnell thinks that everything is peachy keen and continues to prop up this party at his own peril. But at a Trump Pride event in 2020, which I'm assuming he also organized, he explained why he's just not going to give up on the Republican Party, even though they want nothing to do with him. I sat in 1992 in Houston, Texas, and I watched as the Republican National Convention in Houston, Texas had a speaker by the name of Pat McCann. And Pat gave a speech that basically said gays and lesbians were not welcome in the Republican Party. I vowed that day to stay in the Republican Party and to change that. And the reason why 
is because the Republican Party is the party of less government and more personal responsibility. It is the party of conservatives that says, mind your own business. Delusional, just utterly fucking delusional. Republicans have obviously not gotten better on LGBTQ plus rights, and over the course of the last couple of years alone, they've become worse than ever, being outright fascistic towards queer people. Now, he also said that it was Republicans who delivered marriage equality. I'm sorry, what? Where did you get that from? What reality were you living in when that happened? Because if you'll recall, the Supreme Court was the one in a five to four decision that voted that gay marriage bans were unconstitutional. But maybe his logic is that, well, see, during that time, Chief Roberts, a conservative, was the head of the court. And even though he voted against it, we still get this W. But Rick, Republicans don't want that W. Even if you try to make that stretch, which you cannot, but they don't want credit for marriage equality, I promise you that. But he also says that when he heard Pat Buchanan say that gays and lesbians aren't welcome in the party, that at that point he vowed to stay in and fight. Now, here's the problem with that, Rick. It's been 30 years. 30 fucking years. Society has moved on while the GOP itself has not. Now, there's a reason for that, and he knows the reason for that. It's because this is a zero-sum game, right? Republicans, they rely on the most homophobic demographic in the country, evangelicals, to win. So if they were to embrace LGBTQ plus people or even just be a little bit more tolerant, they would lose that voting block, which is the most loyal to them. So they're not going to choose a demographic, i.e. queer people, over their most loyal base when queer people aren't going to vote for Republicans. It just, his logic is so childish. And I feel like he is lying to himself in a way because it seems like he believes the bullshit that he's saying, but in actuality, I don't know, right? LGBTQ Americans can be suckers just like everyone else. But in truth, I think that folks like Rick Grinnell and Caitlyn Jenner, they're not as dumb as they sound, right? They've just chosen to prioritize their class interests over their own human dignity. And that might work out for them since they're wealthy, but it's not going to benefit the vast majority of LGBTQ plus Americans. So in conclusion, the Republican Party indeed still hates gay people with a passion. And I feel like that's pretty obvious. And keeping them out of power is a matter of existential survival for the LGBTQ plus community at this point, despite what losers like Rick Grinnell has to say. But I feel like I don't really have to convince you all because anyone with a brain can see that that is obviously the fucking case. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, F around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, gay pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Gay, 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 gay